Hello, I'm Buda Fem and welcome to the channel and welcome to Rebuilding Palermo. This is a brand new rebuild, hopefully you're going to enjoy it. If you are brand new to the channel, hopefully by the end of the episode you'll be a subscriber. If you're already a subscriber as always, thanks for checking out another one of my videos. Make sure you all smash that like button, show the episode, the series and my channel some support. If you really want to support the channel, you can always pledge to the Patreon below. So, Rebuilding Palermo. Um, I've come across Palermo, I know all about him as a club. I've not really paid much attention to Italian football over the last few years, but I do know who Palermo are. Uh, and I came across him while I was making a recent story video on my channel called A New Hope. And when I looked into him, I realised that this year, at the beginning of this season, they were dropped from Serie B. Um, there was a few financial irregularities. Um, they were going to get in trouble. They didn't file a form, I don't think. They filed it wrong, a certain document, and uh, they got scrapped. They had to reform as a Phoenix club and start again in the non-league of Italian football, which is Serie D, a league I've never been in. It's a league you have to download and add to your game. So, yeah, I thought this might be amazing. Now, if you've watched my commentary series, that was quite long. I don't know how long this one's going to be. Um, my only aim is hopefully to get this team back into the Serie A, but wow, it's going to be it's going to be hard work, like really hard work. But I like the club. I like its potential. I love that we play in pink. I think that is absolutely amazing. So I hope you're going to enjoy it too because it should be fun. And hopefully we can learn some things together and I can teach you some techniques and how to play the game. So it's exciting, man. It's exciting. So yeah, buckle in and let's get started. Now we'll start here on the main club page. And the first thing I like about this club is they've got kill kits, but they also play in pink and black. And I think that's awesome. Now originally they played in uh, red and blue back in the olden days. But I don't think they played in that for too long because it was quite a common colour and there's quite a lot of teams that had them colours. So they ended up adopting the pink and black. Um, I don't know the exact reason why, but I do know they had to wait ages for the material to come from England because at the time we were the daddies and stuff like that. But um, they did change the kits again during World War II or just before that while they were under the fascist regime. Um, he made them change their colours. I think red and yellow is a regional colour. But well, soon as all that ended and they came back, they went back to pink. So pink is their, their proper colour. And when you're playing the games in 3D, I really enjoy it. I don't know why. I do like a bit of pink. Um, but we've got, and I'll go through the facilities later, great stadium. Uh, potential to have a great fan base. Um, but right now you'll see we are in Serie D, a regional division. So we're playing local teams. We'll have to travel far, hopefully save some pennies. But we should not be here. We should not be here. I mean, look at this. I mean, only, what, 15 years ago, they were in the top five in the Serie A. In Serie A for ages. And then they got relegated, came back up. Serie A for a little bit, got relegated. And then down to Serie B. And then, they, look at that. That's that's from where they've gone. And they've gone straight down to D. Obviously, because we've had to come back as a Phoenix club. And I didn't know that. Now, obviously, we've heard of Parma. Parma happened to Parma a few years ago. They've worked their way back up. Um, but once you start looking into Italian football, there's not a lot of money in the country. You can see why a lot of teams probably crumble. But you can also start seeing, when you start playing through these lower leagues, teams you recognise and you look at them and you think, they were in the Serie A. I mean, the Serie D and Serie C alone, I think I put a list together last night of at least 10 teams that in the last 15 years have had stints in Serie A and have either just got relegated and relegated or been dropped down to Serie D just like Palermo. Now this is our general page and you can see our nicknames, the year we were founded. Um, there is some dispute over that. Some people say they might have been founded two years earlier by an Englishman, but then other people say there was another sports club, they might have morphed into one. So I think they just came to the consensus that the year 1900 was the year they were founded. So they're 120 years old this year and find themselves in Serie D. So I just, it just it just pulled on me, I thought this is a club that really needs a rebuild, a proper rebuild. Um, now we've got quite a few fierce rivals, one of them is Messina who, like us, a few years ago were in Serie A and like us have been dropped down and we're in the same regional division. Two teams that are quite big are going to be going at each other, so that really excited me about the season. I thought we've got a good rival there. Um, lots of legends, um, but only three of them really stand out to me. One of them is Luca Toni, used to be a legend on this game and in real life, great, great player. He used to play for him, but it's the other two. Cavani used to play here, which is insane. And Dybala. Imagine I still had Cavani and Dybala up front. You'd win Champions Leagues. Insane. So yeah, lots of derbies, lots of legends. 
lots of history. The club has never won anything huge. Um, it's won lower level divisions, it's won lower level cups. It's won the Serie B four times. And I do think they've got to the actual Coppa Italia a few times and lost finals. Um, so that's something for me to aim for, isn't it? One, either the Serie A or Coppa Italia, the big ones. Palermo itself is, um, I think it's the main capital of Sicily. It's one of the biggest places anyway. And it's in like the north of Sicily. Um, beautiful place on the Mediterranean. I mean, once you start looking at the pictures, it's awesome. It's like, I really want to go there one day. How lovely is it? Proper nice. So yeah, great place to live and play football. Um, our stadium, the Renzo Barbera, or Barbera, um, great stadium. It's looking old, it's looking a bit tired, but it's got pure character. It, it's like a South American kind of stadium. I really, I like the look of it. I'm not even going to consider um, changing it for now because we've got no money anyway. But um, we don't own it anymore, I'm guessing. They've had to sell it and we're renting it, which is great. You know what I mean? But it's a nice stadium. Um, but one thing I will say is we don't feel it anymore on the game anyway but i'm guessing we will have the potential to fill it if we rise up the leagues because they, they have filled it in the past and um, so that's quite cool training facilities quite pretty standard um, but they are well better than anyone in this division and probably divisions above us um, and when you look at the scenery as well what a place to practice your football we are semi-professional we're in basically the non-league of italian football um, but it's quite cool it's quite exciting like i said it's not a league you get on the game you have to download it is quite a few on steam if you want to try it yourself let me know and i'll put you onto the person that created it and you can go to his page on steam and download it so I'll talk to me in the comments if you want um but yeah we'd we look like we've got a decent amount of money in the bank but that isn't decent look at my wage budget i could pump some of that money in there i think once i started looking at the squad i thought i don't need to make too many changes here because it's been ripped apart from whatever it was last year but they've got a team in place that could definitely compete. And a good indicator of that is the fact that we're favourites. I've not made any signings, I've not done anything, and we are favourites to win a league with our two rivals from Messina. Do you know what I mean? So I think that's the team, though. That's the main team that came down, used to be in the Serie A. So it's quite crazy, but um, I don't know a lot of the teams anyway, so I'm, I'm going into this blind. I've never played this level. I don't know the depths of Italian football. But that's what it is. But it's exciting, isn't it? I like this kind of thing. I like a challenge. So these are the transfers that have been made by the computer or the club in the summer of last year in real life. So they've obviously they've lost a lot of players. And when you go through with some of them, some of them are pretty good. You can see some of them were Serie B players. They've obviously said, got to go. And obviously, we're not a professional club anymore. We have to cut the wages. It's, it's, it's probably been heartbreaking for a lot of the fans. Staff. I wasn't going to do anything and I always rip the staff out but when I looked at it and I thought we've already got the best staff they're not very good but my idea was don't give any new contracts let's leave this as it is and I just soldier on with what I've got and then next year hopefully if we can go up we'll see what happens but for now I'll just leave it because there isn't anyone out there I can't offer contracts everything I try to offer is a non-contract which is it's not the best is it now, this is a squad you get when you take over the club now if you're taking over a random Serie D team that's a natural Serie D team, it'd probably get filled out with computer regens. But because we're Palermo, it's not. We've got proper players here. And, you know, we've got some good star ratings. I'll show you some of my best players just for now. Um, let's have a look at one. Andrea. I mean, that's he's not bad, is he? When you think of what level we're at, they're not bad. But all of them, if you look at the contracts, they're all going to run out. So I was just going to see what's what because I couldn't really offer them new deals. This is the star man, so his contract runs out in this season. I can only offer him a part-time deal, and he wants a certain amount, and I, I, can, I, I could go through it and try and show you, but he honestly won't have it, so I was going to have a situation at the end of the year, so I'm trying to just not think too far ahead. Look at the staff I've got, work with the players I've got, maybe if I could bring in one or two, great, and just go out the season with favourites. I've just got to play them games, do my thing, play my tactic, try my best. Now, we do have an under-20s and under-18s, which is good. And you've got a lot of high star ratings there, but they're not they're nothing special. I mean, let's have a look at one young 16-year-old here who looks quite good. Do you know what I mean? So we have to wait and see with this because yeah. Yeah. So obviously with the money situation and all that, anything improvement-wise, facility-wise, that all that's on the back burner. Like I said, this is gonna be one of the seasons I could probably fly through because I've not had much to do. It's just a case of putting my tactic in, setting my training up, which I'll show you in a bit, and then just going for it do you know what i mean going for it what i've got but the vision of the club 
is they want to build up a motion to sell your C, sell your C, sell your C. So that's it. There's what I hopefully step by step rise up. But I want to rise up a bit quicker. And talking of that, you've got to win it. You've got to win it. There's no playoffs, there's no nothing. Uh, bottom three get relegated and you can get databases. This one is, but I've not got it on where they go right down even further. I've just capped it at Sevilla D and just to help the computer out, speed things up. But you can get a database and I will show you if you want it, let me know where you go all the way down, <laughs> which would be insane. But it might be fun for you. Um, so yeah, you've got to win the league. There's no ifs or buts. And there are quite a few regionals and I think this is a fairly newish system, I think. I don't think it's too old. I think they restructured it years ago. Um, but I quite like it. I like how they do it. So you've got a regional here. Look, you've got Sevilla D, basically Sevilla D, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And that's it, right? But then you've got Sevilla C and there's three of them and they all have, look at the relegations. Must be like a playoff or something. I'm not going to worry about Sevilla C yet. We'll have a look at that if we ever get there. But I just want to show you. Do you know what I mean? So there's three Serie C's for you to go up into. So it becomes like a bit more regional again, but maybe it expands. And then once you get to Serie B, it starts to get a bit more, you know, normal. But Serie C is professional. So we need to get back to being a professional club. Now I made one sign in. I needed a centre half. Once I looked at the squad and I, I tweaked it from the under-20s and so on, I put together, a t you know, two players in each position to fit my tactics, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but I was a centre half down of any quality. So I found this guy, only signing on a non contract. So he's only playing for us at the minute. He's not playing for any wages. He's not ours, really. It's weird. Um, and I was going to struggle to keep hold of him, but he was, <laughs> he was great at this level. This is my training schedule with my coaches. And obviously, what I always aim to do normally is get as many coaches in as I can and have one specific coach that's good at everything to try and get at least a minimum of four stars at the minute. We can't do that. Which is fair enough, so this is the best I can do. you just got to try and spread it out. So what I'll always do is, I'll ask the assistant to assign him, and then I go through it and tweak it. Sometimes I'll just do it myself individually. But when I first start out, until you get to know your staff, just ask your assistant to do it, and then go through it, and just you can adjust it. Now when it comes to team training, I've said this in the past, but I never do this. I never do my team training, because it's too much going on. And you've got to think, as a YouTuber, <laughs> I've got to get through seasons. I have to play quite a lot. And you have to minimise something. Maybe I'll have a go at it one day, but I can never be bothered with it. Team training is something I leave to my staff. But what I do do myself is individual player training. Now, whenever you've got a tactic you like, and I have at the minute, and you've got its little um, roles and formation, it's great to eventually get to a stage where you can have the players suit it perfectly. And that's what I always do eventually. But you're not always going to be that way. right? So what I always do anyway is I've got my tactic and I've got the roles. And I'll go through the squad and the players are going to play in them positions. I train them in them roles. So obviously this is the goalkeeper anyway. So he's just learning to be a goalkeeper. That's fine. Um, I'll look at things he needs to work on. And that'll be his additional focus. And then I always do double intensity. Especially throughout the season. I work him to death. Let's move on to my number one striker. He's on loan this season. It's Lorenzo Luca. Um, he hasn't got a face. Now he's a target man. But I play with a poacher. So I know he's a target man. But I'll train him as a poacher. I'm training him at the minute in his attacking movement and he's doing double intensity. And this is something I can change over throughout the year. Once he improves something, I'll go back in, usually every couple of months, and see if I need to change the additional focus, which is a good thing to do in my opinion, and maybe change the intensity. So that's just what I do. Now tactically, I'm using pretty much the same tactic I've been using for the last couple of teams. I've been at Coventry and the ones I'm using on my uh, current Journeyman series. And I like it. I made the odd tweak. Now and again, and uh, that's why I've called this one Palermo. It's not, it's not much different, um, but I believe in it, and I think we can work with it, and I think I'm going to kill some teams with it. Let's have a quick look at some of these teams I was talking about that have crashed and burned uh, down into um, Italian football. And this is our rival in this division. They're a local rival, historic rival, um, and they look same year, a few years ago, they were compete. We were playing against each other in the Serie A. And look at that. So they've gone from Serie B straight to Serie D, which I'm guessing, I don't know, I've not looked into, was maybe a financial thing. Got a team from Serie C here, who I used to know all about. This was Serie A when I was a kid. And um, they've had a few bumpy rides, B to down to D. And then, look, they've gone from B to D. They've just been promoted up to C this year. Do you remember these guys? These were Serie A for years. They've, look at that, relegation, relegation. Like, ouch. 
There's another Xeria A team from in the past who obviously slowly gone down, been up and down a bit as well. So I may have given you some ideas there, a couple of rebuilds for you. Um, but for me personally, in our club, Palermo, I think the model we need to follow is Parma. Because they dropped even further than we did. We've dropped from, we used to be Serie A, but we've been Serie B for a couple of years. They were Serie A for me. And look, they've gone straight down to D. Obviously, as we know, Phoenix Club, like we have, but they've gone straight up, straight up, straight back. So that hopefully is something we can copy, but it's not easy. There's not the money there is in England. It's going to be hard. And I'll start, say, with a big, huge pre-season. A pre-season I put together myself. Um, I scrapped it all apart from the Palermo under-20s game because I just wanted a big one. I wanted to get this team gelling. And I could go through the whole squad and show you some of the players, but it takes forever, doesn't it? If I just show you quickly some of the best ones. There's my goalkeeper. He's pretty good. The two centre-halves are pretty decent. Can't lie. I like them a lot. We've got left-back as well. So, you know, we've got, for this division, I think we've got a lot of quality. The only trouble is we won't have this quality next year unless I can sign some. Um, so my plan is obviously to try and save as much money as possible. He's a good lad, this Martinelli. Very good player, really, to be fair. For the level we're at, you've got to remember the level we're at. Uh, Martin as well, um, on the wings. So my plan would be freebies. I love that. I love doing a complete rebuild on freebies. Just hoping the quality is going to be available next season. Um, so, I was going to scout and see what I could find. And there's my best striker. And plan for next year, because I want to plan like I'm going to get promoted. I want to plan like a winner. I'm not going to think about losing because if we don't get promoted, I'm going to lose most of this team. And then what kind of quality am I going to bring in? There's a risk we could go backwards and this will be a massive fail. Hello, I'm just interrupting this episode to promote a new series, a new Let's Play series. that will be starting on the channel very, very soon. It's going to be a bit different than any of my rebuilds. On my journey, man. We're going to have two episodes a season and we're going to have some live comms. I'm not doing live comms since my Munich series, so hopefully, you're going to enjoy it. This one, though, is going to be a bit of a challenge. I've got the class of 92 as my boss, and they are in charge of everything. The only thing I'll be doing is the tactics and picking the team. They're going to buy my players, sell my players, and the pressure is going to be on me to succeed. Can I keep that job? Can I do it? It's going to be way out of my comfort zone, but I'm going to try my best, and hopefully, you're going to tune in. Well, we're here in January, and has it been a massive fail? Well, at the minute, no, but we're definitely competing, and you can tell our arch rival of a decent team too, because we're pretty much neck and neck. And um, we've only lost one game each. They've just drawn a couple. We're six points clear, but I've got two guys that are scoring goals. I've got Luca up top and Martin in the middle. I've got the three best players in the league. I've got the three most assist makers. We definitely got to grab the bull by the horns here and get out of this freaking league in the first attempts. And I think, or I felt like. We could. Defensively, we're the best, which is pretty sweet. And then going forward, we're easily the best. And I can't lie, even though you've got crap players, some people get put off by playing at lower levels. Because you think your players are rubbish, but they're not rubbish at that level. Do you know what I mean? So when I'm watching this team, I think they're, I think they're playing really great. The tactic is flowing. Some of the goals, some of the football, I'm really enjoying it. And these are our results in the league so far. Like I said, we've only lost one game. A game we shouldn't have lost. But it was quite close. Um, and then we drew a game. And then we've just been on this streak. I mean, the last, what, four, five, six, seven games at this point, we've not conceded a goal. We're scoring goals for fun. And I want to show you some of them goals. I'm noticing this a lot as well. Now, I don't know if it is the fact that we have got a bit more quality, maybe, in the team than other teams. But my tactics are really going at teams. And I'm enjoying it. There's some games we've got where we have got tons of shots, 20, 30-odd, even 40 Another team, I've got two or three. So not only are we just creating a lot, we're shutting teams right down, which is like super positive. And um, so yeah, we played Nola in this game, and this was early on in the season, but it was one of my first favourite games really. Five-one thrashing. Honestly, I'm loving it. Now this is the last game we just played. A uh, two-nil win at home against Rochella. And um, again, if I ever say any of these names wrong, I'm sorry. Um, but pronunciation is never great. Um, but this Luca kid who hasn't got a face, he's on loan from Torino, he's only like 18. He is very good. Um, also, the centre half, Lovric, is very good. But yeah, remember, signed him on a non contract, he scored goals and everything for me. He's decided to leave, hasn't he? I mean, he is Croatian and he's leaving to go and play in the Croatian top flight. 
Um, so when you've got a player on an on contract, there's always a risk they can just be taken away from you, and that that's fine. But the way things are going, I just want to keep the rest of this team together. I'm not going to try and replace him. I'm going to promote someone from the U team and just keep going at this season, see what we can do. We're also in the Coppa Italia D, which is the Italian Cup. For this level, which is all right, non-league cup, be nice to have a good run in it. I think we can, and we started off pretty well, winning one 0 Followed that up with a trip to Florida. Unfortunately, not the American Florida uh, with a Loverick, the center half hat trick. Now, I'm showing you the goals for the Florida game because look at the pitch. Is it shale or sand or something? Plastic, artificial something. I have no idea. Um, but it was just a bit weird for me. I've never ever been on a pitch like this not for a long time not that i could actually remember in 3d next up we played one of our rivals and absolutely destroyed him and it was on to the fifth round and we destroyed this team caldero terme that's what i'm going to call them uh five one i mean this kid scored me 22 goals in 18 games in the league a six in four in the cup what a beast and what i do like about the cup especially as we get deeper into it you start playing more teams you don't know uh, teams like this it is the same for you. Red and green should never be seen, only upon a fool. It's a very famous saying because it's a jester colour. It's bloody awful. They just do not work well together. I feel sorry for this club. So hopefully we can put them out of their misery and knock them out of the cup. So obviously we've got to play the Jokers in the quarterfinal of the cup and we're top of the league, but it's still a long way to go. A long, long way to go. Let's find out what happens, eh? Well, we won the league and uh, we won it by some margin. We just kept on going and going and we never lost a game. After that game we lost early on in the season um, and Messina just kept dropping points. We were just ferocious, it was just relentless and I flew through this season, they want loads to do and I, I think it took me about three hours once I set up just to fly through it, just game after game after game after game and I uh, yeah, enjoyed it. These are the results in the league and I've reversed it and I will need to look at the amount of clean sheets. The unbeaten run we went on was new records. We have broken records this year. And this is that squad arranged by average rating and you'll notice how many of my good players are leaving. Couldn't give them new deals. They didn't want new deals that I could offer them. Even though we're potentially going to become a professional club, it's not going to, they want, they want to secure their future, which is fair enough. So I was going to lose the big bulk of my good team. I'm going to lose the loan signings. I was going to be left with a handful of players. I'm talking about five. So to some that might be scary, but to me, Ooh, I was excited, man. I could not wait. Don't forget, we're still in the cup. And I thought I was going to do this team. We only had a stadium for about 250 people. We're talking, this is like a super non-league. But they freaking put up a fight. Then it was on to the semi-finals, which is two-legged for some reason. Really need the extra game. Um, and we won 3-0. Luca, I love you. Do you know what? My guy switched off in the next game. Completely switched off. I did rotate it, though, to be fair. Give some guys a game. Nearly threw it away in a way because, yeah, got beat. But we got through to the final. Could I do the double? Yes, I could. But only just. And I was buzzing with this. It was tighter than I thought. I thought we'd score more goals. But we were the better team. Better team at this level by a country mile. But, yeah, I've enjoyed it. I've got some good players that I'm going to... Am I going to miss them? No. I don't know. I've had some good moments with them. Especially the striker and a few of the other lads. Um, but I was really chomping at the bit to get building a new team. We have broken some records this year and I want to share some with you that I really like. Most points in a season, because we are awesome. Uh, most league wins in a season. I think the, the original record was 26, so we smashed that out of the park. Uh, highest average attendance, 9,000, which I was really happy with, because some of the other games, we weren't getting that. So, I mean, we've got 30,000 seat stadium. We should be bossing that. Uh, we've got the biggest win this year with our 8-0 destruction of that team. Uh, most matches won in a row, 13. Um, most matches without losing, 30. I mean, wow. Uh, and then most team goals, 94. Uh, most overall goals by a player, Lorenzo Luca with 28. I mean, we're not going to get him back, but hopefully, I hope he goes on and has a good career. So you have it, that is the end of episode one. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're going to stick with it because seriously i'm loving playing it and i'm well into the next season so i'm hoping to bring that to you soon i'm flying through it and um, so don't forget i've got to rebuild the squad i'm going to rebuild the staff and hopefully we're going to take this club on but it's going to be a lot harder this next year in sevier c we've got the sevier c cup to go for as well all new players i'm going to try and show you them in a bit more detail because hopefully we can up the quality a bit but yeah 
seriously really like it and hopefully I'm inspired you to maybe um start a lower league save in Italy smash that like button make sure you come back for episode two of rebuilding Palermo and make sure you at this moment in time with the world how it is you and your family stay safe so for me and my family I wish you all the best I'm booed I'll see you next time